Hi, I'm Dr. David McAlpin, an Associate Professor of Biblical Interpretation at Midwestern Seminary in Kansas City. I'm your instructor for Introduction to Hermeneutics, and we find ourselves about in the middle of Week 3, Unit 3. I wanted to uh, touch base with you and update you on a few things and to help you with your assignments. Uh, I wanted to let you know, first of all, that uh, I've received a, a lot of emails uh, from many of you saying, hey, I have uh, uh, I've turned my assignments in on time, but I'm getting late notices from Blackboard. When I open Blackboard, it's showing me, it's telling me that, uh, uh, that my assignments are late, but they're not. Uh, what's going on? Let me just say that, uh, that so many of you have emailed me. <laughs> we know it's not you, all right? And uh, I've, I've checked this out. So that's a setting in Blackboard we're working on uh, correcting, and uh, we hope to have it uh, fixed by the end of the day. But just uh, if you would do this, check your... Uh, your assignment due dates in Blackboard and on your syllabus, and if you got them in on time, there, there's no problem, all right? And I will make sure and, and, uh, and check that. Well, hey, we're in the middle of Unit 3, and I believe you had four assignments this week. You had a reading assignment from both of your textbooks. Uh, you had uh, two exegesis exercises. You had a discussion board, and then you, you've uh, got as an assignment your first installment what's going to be your first uh, section in your, uh, your, your final exegetical paper. And so this is kind of like a rough draft of section one. It's entitled step one, grasping the text in their town. Let's talk for a minute about uh, your, your paper, your assignment for this week. Um, let me encourage you, if you haven't, to read chapter two in Duval and Hayes where they describe the five-step interpretive journey. It'll be of tremendous help for you. And the goal of step one is to identify what the passage meant to the original audience uh, to whom it was written or preached, maybe, in uh, Malachi's case, say. Uh, but to do that, there's a lot of background material that you're going to have to cover. As a result, step one is going to be the longest section in what will uh, finally be your final exegetical paper. So. As you begin uh, this uh, step one, grasping the text in their town, first thing you'll need to do is to expand the passage that you were assigned or that you chose in this case. Now by design, uh, originally uh, your passage consisted of only uh, one or two or just a very uh, small number of verses. But in order to understand what a passage means, you've got to take it in context. And so um, I want you to go into Blackboard and uh, if you'll click on Course Content, then click on Unit 3, and then uh, go down the page and you're going to see, uh, you're going to see some links, uh, hyperlinks for the four passages. Click on the link for your passage, those links are in blue fonts, and uh, a file will either open, a document will either open or it may download to your computer, but open that file and uh, it will give you specific instructions regarding your passage, which verses you need to, uh, to expand to include in your study. Also, uh, there in Blackboard in that same area, you're going to notice a link for the Turabian Writer's Guide. It's very important that you get familiar with that because beginning with step one, you want to begin formatting your paper in accordance with Turabian's uh, writing guide. Uh, Turabian will give you guidance on your margins, uh, on how to do uh, bibliographic entries, footnotes, uh, all sorts of things like that. So uh, how to do quotations. Uh, it's very important that you begin to format your paper according to Turabian. If you would, please use Times New Roman fonts, 12-point fonts for your text of the body of your paper, and uh, let's use 10-point Times New Roman fonts for the, uh, for the footnotes, all right? Now, last week you had uh, an assignment. It was called, uh, what are the questions uh, I need to ask? And for each of the five steps, you composed some questions to ask. Uh, some of you asked me, uh, 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 do I, uh, I, I have a list of questions. Can I add to those questions? Yes, you can. Also, if there are questions that you, you put in that list last week that you've decided, I really don't need that question. Uh, it's okay, you don't have to include all of them. So you may want to use those questions uh, that you're going to uh, uh, answer as uh, the subsection headings uh, for this paper. 
or you could just use instead of who is the author uh, or who was the author, uh, you may just uh, entitle your subsection authorship. In fact, let me suggest this, uh, strongly suggest it, I may say. Um, I'd like this paper to have at least the following six subsections. So I'm going to give you the subsection headings, and uh, I think you'll be able to get everything you want to include in this step one under one of these six uh, subsections. All right, here they are. Number one, authorship. So in the section, describe the author, uh, anything about his background that's important. Subsection number two is audience. Uh, who was the audience? What was their relationship uh, with the author? Uh, here's where you'll put uh, things like the historical setting. Uh, what was happening in history at the time this was written? Uh, where did they live? What city were they in? What geographical area? What was the culture like? Is there any geographical information about uh, the city or area in which they lived that might relate to the passage and help you understand it? So number two would be audience. Third subsection would be occasion of writing occasion of writing. What prompted the author to write to these folks, or let's say in Malachi's case, to preach this sermon to them. Uh, number four is issue addressed or issues addressed. What's the subject or the subjects uh, that are uh, being addressed in your passage? What are the topics? Um, number five, literary context. And under literary context, you want to uh, include such uh, such issues as what's the theme of the individual book in which my passage occurs by Isaiah, Malachi, 1st Timothy, Revelation. Uh, how does my extended passage fit into the theme uh, of the book, into the book's flow? How does it contribute to uh, what's being uh, what's being said in the book? Uh, what do the paragraphs just before my passage, my extended passage, as well as the paragraphs just after it, what do those, uh, what do those, uh, what do those say? In other words, what occurs before my passage, what occurs just after it, and how does my passage connect what goes before it and what goes after it? And then finally, subsection uh, six, the sixth uh, title would be paraphrase of passage. Paraphrase of passage. Uh, in this area, I want you to walk through your extended passage sentence by sentence or verse by verse and simply give your paraphrase of, uh, of what uh, the author was saying to his original audience. What do the words mean? What do the sentences mean? And uh, do this in detail. No matter which passage you chose, you're going to discover that at least one point in there, at least one point in there, uh, you're going to come to a statement that's kind of obscure. It's, it's, you're not quite sure what it means, and you want to go into great detail there. Make sure that you nail down, uh, here's what this sentence or these sentences meant to the original audience. And so explain in detail what the, what the author was saying to his, to his audience. Hey, I hope these things have been helpful to you. Again, it's just a privilege to have you in the class, and uh, please know that I'm, I'm honored to serve as your instructor. I want to help you any way I can. Uh, I'm answering a pile of emails right now, uh, so I'll get back to you as soon as I can uh, if you've emailed me. But know that uh, you're in my thoughts and prayers. Let me, let me pray with you as we close. Father, thank you so much for each and every student in this class. Thank you for the joy of, uh, of just studying your word together. Make us, God, able servants. Uh, increase our skills, Lord, as we um, dig into your word. And Father, I pray that you would make us not only better scholars, uh, but just better lovers of Jesus Christ and, uh, and faithful servants of, of yours, Lord. And so bless each student, give them discipline, give them joy in their journey, and uh, give them energy and, uh, and help them, Lord, in every way. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.